1936, the Netherlands began its next class of submarine. This was the two boats of the 1,116 surfaced and 1,561 submerged ton 019 class. In broad terms, they continued the trend of larger, more capable subs. The use of thicker steel and being welded increased their diving depth even more. Being larger also increased their fuel stowage and thus range. Perhaps most importantly, they also introduced the adoption of the snorkel, which allowed a submarine to run its engines and recharge its batteries without fully surfacing. This was a huge deal and would eventually be adopted by subs everywhere, right up to the present. Another less important in the long run change was the adoption of mine laying chutes. As has already been covered, the Netherlands realized its two best hopes of holding off a Japanese invasion of the East Indies was submarines and mines. So why not combine the two by having mine laying submarines? Makes sense on paper. In fact, most countries experimented with the idea. In practice, though, the proliferation of mines that could simply be laid through torpedo tubes, ship, or bomber-type aircraft made the idea of a specialized mine layer superfluous. Overall, not a bad design. In fact, they became the basis for other countries' designs, but more on that later. O-19, originally K-19, was started June 15, 1936, and was completed July 3, 1939. O-20, originally K-20, was also started June 15, 1936, and was completed August 28, 1939. Main armament was eight 533mm torpedo tubes, two at the bow and two at the stern, each with a reload, and two carried externally in a trainable mount forward of the sail between the double hulls. Forty mines could be carried in external chutes. An 88 mm gun was carried forward of the sail. Propulsion on the surface was provided by two diesel engines that provided 5,300 horsepower to recharge the batteries and run the two propellers up to 19 knots. While submerged, they ran on batteries that powered the motors, which provided 1,000 horsepower for a top speed of 9 knots. Test depth was 100 meters. They were completed with an Atlas sonar. While under refit in 1944, O 19 was fitted with Type 291 radar and traded her Atlas sonar for a British Type 120. O 19 was at the East Indies in May 1940. When the Pacific War started, she began patrolling the greater East Indies region. With the fall of the East Indies, and with supplies running low in mid-March 1942, she set course for Sri Lanka, arriving near the end of the month. At the start of April, she patrolled southwest of India. In late April, through the first part of May, she hunted around the Strait of Malacca. In mid-May, she went to Bombay for overhaul, but spares weren't exactly laying around, so she then went to Kenya and on to South Africa in September where she did ASW training. In mid-January 1943, she left South Africa for overhaul in England, arriving at the start of February. Overhaul and training lasted almost a year and a quarter, but finally in mid-June 1944, she left for Sri Lanka via the Mediterranean. Arriving in late July, she conducted more training. In late August, she set out to again hunt the East Indies, ending her patrol at Fremantle in mid-September. After repairs and refit, in late October, she again headed out to hunt around the East Indies, returning in late November. In mid-December, she set off on her next patrol, again in the East Indies, but this time carrying mines. On January 9th, she was damaged by depth charges and had to head home for repairs arriving at Fremantle in late January 1945. With repairs completed and reloaded with mines, at the end of March, she again set out for the East Indies, returning at the start of May. At the end of June, she left to run supplies to Subic in the Philippines. On July 8, 1945, she grounded on Lab Reef. Even with the help of the U.S. submarine Cod, she was stuck, so she had to be abandoned and the wreck demolished. O-20 
was also in the East Indies in May 1940 and remained there through the start of the Pacific War. In mid-December 1941, she was hunting off the coast of Kota Baru when on December 19th she spotted two transport. Unfortunately, they were escorted by three destroyers which counterattacked. Having been depth charged mercilessly and persistently, the damaged boat surfaced where it was shelled, abandoned, and scuttled that evening.